Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Nari Hishmati. I'm a board certified OBGYN in the Muckleteo Everett area just north of Seattle. And today I'm going to talk to you about fetal hydronephrosis. Uh, you may also hear this called fetal pelviectasis and fetal pyelectasis. Uh, it basically means uh, enlarged kidneys, uh, enlarged kidney or kidneys in the baby. Um, this is a very common finding. Uh, we see this in anywhere from about half a percent to four and a half percent of all pregnancies. So this goes into the boat of things that, you know, oftentimes we'll kind of stumble upon something like this and it'll cause a lot of anxiety for my patient. So I want to give you the information about what does this mean, uh, what do we do with it, and where do we go from here. So when you take a look at this, the vast majority uh, of uh, enlarged kidneys that we find, we're going to find incidentally on an ultrasound usually in the second trimester, that 18 to 22 week anatomy scan that we're doing. Uh, and this is usually transient, meaning it's temporary, and it's usually not clinically significant. So anywhere between 44 to about 88% of the time, uh, it's clinically not relevant. Uh, so that means it's something that we look at and uh, we, we pay attention to, we wanna make sure it's gonna resolve, uh, but that it doesn't actually affect the pregnancy, it doesn't affect the baby later. Now, one of the big things about this finding when we see it is we've got to differentiate which ones do we worry about and which ones are going to need follow-up um, because we're seeing enlargement of the kidneys because of either an obstruction or reflux, you know, something that potentially could need surgery and which ones don't really matter. Uh, you know, the other thing is there is, a, there is an increased incidence of seeing these enlarged kidneys on imaging in babies with Down syndrome. So, when this comes up, one of the other things that I'll discuss with patients, while that's a low association, um, do we want to explore that avenue if we haven't, looking for things like chromosomal abnormalities, and we've got another video out there about that, and so sometimes I'll offer somebody a quad screen or a cell-free DNA, some kind of non-invasive screening test so that they can put their mind to ease on that. Now, uh, as I said, uh, typically what's going to happen is uh, we're going to see these enlarged fetal kidneys on an ultrasound, usually on that anatomy scan that we're doing at that 18 to 22 week marker. Uh, now there's a lot of different ways to diagnose fetal hydronephrosis. Um, you know, one of the more common ways is there's something called uh, the renal pelvic dilameter. And what they're basically doing there is when they're taking images and they're looking at the baby, they're going to get an anterior posterior measurement in the transverse view of the baby's kidneys. Uh, basically, they're just measuring to see how big it is. Now, there's a wide range of cutoffs that people are going to use that they're going to say what's normal and what's abnormal. Uh, and if you think about it, with any of these screening tests or things that we do, if you take a cutoff and you move it this way, you're going to pick up everything that's potentially wrong, but you're going to have a bunch of false positives. If you move it and bring it all the way over here, you're not going to have very many false positives, but then you're going to potentially miss some things that are real. So most experts use somewhere between four and five millimeters in the second trimester as the cutoff for what's abnormal for the baby's kidneys. So if it's less than four to five millimeters, we're done, we don't look at it again. Now let's say there's enlargement to about four to five millimeters. You know, the most common follow-up there, and this is typically, again, transient, meaning temporary, um, the most common follow-up we're gonna do is we're gonna re-image in the third trimester. So usually 28 to 30 weeks, we're gonna take another look at the baby's kidneys. Uh, you know, often what's happening is uh, during development, you're going to get some narrowing in an area called the ureteral pelvic junction, and that's going to cause this transient enlargement of the baby's kidneys. And so you follow back up in the third trimester, and if it resolves, we don't worry about it, we don't look at it again. You know, some things to note, this is more common in boys. Um, you know, it can happen in one kidney or it can happen in both kidneys. Uh, it happens in both kidneys somewhere between 20 to 40 percent of the time. We do sometimes get concerned if we see it in both kidneys that maybe we need earlier follow-up uh, or that might be more significant. But in general, you get this small enlargement, four to five millimeters, and we're gonna follow it up in the third trimester. Now, if when we pick this up, if that, if that renal pelvic diameter is greater than 10 millimeters, that's got a higher likelihood that maybe this is more than just your typical transient gonna go away, that maybe there is something structurally wrong or something else there. And so that might affect your follow-up. Um, now, when we look again in the third trimester, um, we're looking for a value of less than 10 millimeters being normal. So if it's less than 10 millimeters, then again, we're done. We don't worry about it again. If it's more than 10 millimeters, while the majority of these cases are still going to be nothing that's going to need surgery or going to be a problem, we do want to make sure we follow that up. 
Now the most common thing that we'll typically do is after the baby delivers, we make sure the pediatrician knows, and then the pediatrician somewhere in that first two weeks of life is going to have a renal ultrasound, basically an ultrasound of the baby's kidneys done, and going to take a look and say, has this resolved? And if it has, we don't have to worry about it. Or has it not resolved? And then we're going to go down that road of bringing in the specialist and taking a look and seeing what needs to be done. The other thing is, most of the time our pediatricians after delivery are going to go ahead and put the baby on some antibiotics because there's a higher incidence of urinary tract infections if there's that mild enlargement there. Um, and so that's the most common follow-up. You know, oftentimes parents will come through and say, well, can we wait that long? You know, something to realize is, let's even say that there is something structurally wrong with the baby's kidneys and that's why we picked this up. You know, the baby starts making urine somewhere between five and nine weeks of life. So typically a couple extra days or a week or two isn't going to make a huge difference. And it's extremely rare for a baby to need surgery right after delivery. Now things that can change that is if you've got a significant enlargement of the baby's kidneys, you know, if it's bilateral, then sometimes there's going to be earlier follow-up in those first two, three days versus you know, in the first two weeks of life. But, you know, more or less, what this comes down to is this is a very, very common finding. Up to four and a half percent of all pregnancies, up to 88% of them are not clinically significant. They're transient, meaning they come and they go, and it's just part of the development that we're seeing, and it's not gonna be a major issue. So, you know, if you take a look at all the findings we have, that 4% of this, or 3% of that, or 4% of that, there's a lot of things. Almost every day I get an ultrasound on my desk that has something like this. I think what's important, we take a look at the information, you want to know what it means, and you want to say, look, what do I have to do and get the appropriate follow-up, uh, and for us not to stress out about it, because it is easy to be stressful when you hear, wait, my baby's kidneys are enlarged, is this going to be something abnormal? And again, in this case, typically it's not going to be an issue, it's not going to be a problem, it's going to go away, and we're just going to do a follow-up ultrasound in the third trimester. So I hope that was helpful, and again, we've got a bunch of other videos on common topics I encourage you to go take a look at. Thank you.